One day. Surely not. Afraid so. The records begin tomorrow. Extraordinary. Oh, here, well, would you. Uh... Not quite yet. Ah, good. Cheers. Ah, oh, yes. Extraordinary times, eh? Aye. You meant extraordinary measures. Measures of gin, you mean? Uh, no, uh, whiskey, actually. No, what I meant was uh, now the breaking down of this door. Never done anything even remotely similar in my entire life. That is to say, one day I'm in my office, and then Aye. one day I'm chopping down a door. It's all in an effort to solve the mystery. What mystery? I was told there was a mystery. Perhaps. Well, surely there's a mystery in it somewhere. I mean, you don't take a civil servant to a door with an axe now, do you? Not unless it's something big. My salary. No, but it's a nice little brew, they, uh, a nice little blend they offer at my local. Mm, you buy your tipple at the local boozer? Oh, I do, yes. Mm, a bit pricey, I expect. Well, my brother-in-law is the landlord. <sighs> and cheaper than the off-license. Mm, of course. Cheaper than anywhere. Oh, my. Well, Mr. Chattel? Chattel, actually. Sorry. Oh, you're not the first. But well, please, continue. You mentioned the mystery. I did. Perhaps you us something. Really? Perhaps there is more here than meets the eye. How so? Perhaps this is the place. Yes. Perhaps. What place? Can I trust you? I'd rather you didn't, actually. Oh, come now. I've never smashed through a door before. Oh, give me that. I hadn't dreamed this could be the place. Surely not here. Right under our noses? Right under our very noses? Mrs. O'Connor. It's Miss. Oh, sorry. So am I. Sorry? What? Well, I didn't quite... Uh, you didn't quite what, Mr. Chettle? It's Cheetle. Cheetle! Here, take this. Perhaps I'd better. Drink it, you're going to need it. Fancy a mystery? How's this for a mystery? Three days before he died. Three little days. The greatest dramatist in the history of the human race sat drinking in a pub. He ate pickled herring and washed it down with a local brew. Oh, not Glenfiddich. No. And we're not sure about the pickled herring, although I'd know what was common at the time. Cheers. And three days later? Three little days later. He was as dead as a dart. How's that for a mystery? Um... Yes? I'm not quite with you. Have another drink. Perhaps it'll come to you. Well, what has this room got to do with pickled herring? Oh, God! Man! <sighs> when you rose this morning and put on your Marks and Spencer socks, one after the other, 
Did it ever occur to you that in an hour's time, he'd be sitting in the very room that killed the greatest dramatist in the human race? Look at me. Look me in the eye. Well, I'm looking. I would gladly burn every copy of one of his plays if I could just peruse the man's laundry list. We know so little about him. Who said? it? What? But everyone says when I tell them this. Um, Which play? Uh, sorry? Which play would I burn? Oh, of course. None. None? Couldn't bear it. Which of course makes me own like a sham. Well, now you're a lecturer. Right? <sighs> um, Professor. Oh, yes. Trinity College. Uh, Trinity, yes. I read your curriculum vita last night. I. Well, as a professor, surely you... As a professor, I spent the last 20 years of my life constructing meaningful explanations of the great man's words for people who may or may not have cared a little or a lot about what I was saying. But then, 10 years ago, I began writing about the great man's life. Oh, it thrilled me. But even at the beginning, I focused on one thing alone. What do you know about Shakespeare? Well, I must confess, not a lot. Was he homosexual? Sorry. Which way did his Peter teeter? I don't know, actually. Was he right or left-handed? Um, Who was the dark lady of the sonnet? Does it matter? Yes! It matters! Yes. It matters. I spent the last ten years of my academic career staking a claim that it matters. A flown in the face of academic purity, which, which focuses mainly on his work, not on his life. Too soft on facts. Conjecture is not scholarship. Guessing is not truth. Well, all that is over now. Because now, now I have me missing link. Here, in this little space. Locked up for near 400 years. Here, in this room. William Shakespeare began to die. And three days later, he was gone. And you and I have 24 hours to find the truth. At 23? You I... and I will work through the day and night. Call your wife, we'll be eating Indian takeaway tonight. And you and I will solve the mystery together. Uh, Just you and I. I've been meaning to tell I meant to tell you soon. Hi, am I late? <laughs> Breakfast it is. Oh, all hands to the pump. We should make him clean it himself. Ha! A good one. Oh, rabbit sucker. Boy, enough of that. He'll pay us well. Oh, and he pays it all. He'll pay. So you say. They'll be here soon. No, Auntie. Yes, Petal. Well, there's a money to be had tonight. If we finish before they come. No, I mean different money. Oh, I. Do you think they'll be saying a mass? No, you dat girl. They're here for drinking tonight. Well, still, there's been many a time before. Uh, I. The king's men would be keen to know. The devil you say? Well, it's not that we betray his trust. It's just that. Uh... Go on. Well, trust is a commodity worth paying for. Trust is worth a coin or two, do you not think? A piece of silver or two? Oh, it's not like that. Judas! It's not like that. I would never betray them. Good. But uh, we take a risk as well. A group of Catholics assembled for a mass. There'll be no mass tonight. So you say. 
No blood of Christ, only a drop of wine. Spanish wine. Yes. Bloody Catholic wine. I'll not have you blaspheme in this place. Bloody sack from Catholic Spain. Blasphemer! Thank you, sent. Spies are everywhere, aren't they? It's not safe to be seen with them. Coward. Papist. Judas. Foolish old woman. Help. I'll speak to him. He's a rich man. Yes. Greatest poet of his age. <laughs> or so he says. Yes, constantly. <laughs> I'll be here soon. I'll finish up here. I'll fetch the wine. You be careful. Won't be long. Pardon, Master. Mary. Margaret. Hi. You're growing. Yes, Master. Enough of these formalities, hmm? Oh, as you wish. How many will there be tonight? Only a few short notice. Wherever two or three of you are gathered in my name. You remember your lessons well. What I could forget. Aye, perhaps. But you have nothing to fear tonight, dear girl. There'll be no state-defying meetings tonight. Only a quiet celebration. They're printing my words, you see. Not all of them. Everyone worth shouting on the stage. I've seen your plays. Yes, yes, everyone has seen my plays. Father would take me in fine afternoons. You stood upon the hazelnuts. Yes. And what did you say? I saw the world. Yes, I've a talent, haven't I? Oh, you made me laugh. I know. I'm quite the best, aren't I? Oh, you are the best. Thank you. Well, except for me. Enough. We'll just leave it at that, shall we? As you wish. I despise comparison, don't you? Not really. I'm quite the best. We'll just leave it at that. As you wish. Well, uh... Burbage be here tonight? Ah, uh, yes. Burbage, the greatest actor on the stage. Oh, he is quite something, isn't he? Does he make your heart go thumpa thumpa? He's a giant. <laughs> if you say so. He's a man of action. Oh, come now. To be or not to be. Where's the action in that? And his voice. Oh, I could listen to him all day. Uh, listen for five minutes. It'll seem like a day. And don't ask for the way to Silver Street. The man has no sense of direction. Or sense at all, for that matter. Actors are only as good as the words I write for them to say. Hold on, lads! Blood, now look what you've done. What? You've conjured the poor fellow. Oh, I could listen to him forever. You may get your wish. Hold on, that. Is this the face that launched a thousand ships? <laughs> it is the East. And Juliet is the sun. Or oh, rise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Ah, uh, me. She speaks. <laughs> oh, speak again, bright angel. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. What's Montague? Tis no hand, no foot, no arm, no face, nor any other part. Oh. Be some other name. Doff thy name, and for that name, take all my self. Blood is everyone in England an actor now. This one is. Thank you, sir. Not at all. Mm -hmm. See, Barbie, that's why they don't allow women on the boards. Uh, they should. They will. Oh, they will. When? <laughs> soon. Not too soon. Well, I'll be ready. You're ready now. Maggie! Yes, Auntie Jen! Help me stretch the wine! Coming! Lady! 
By yonder blessed moon, I swear. I swear not by thy moon, the inconstant moon that monthly changes in her circled orb, lest thy love prove likewise variable. She is good. Rubbish. I like her. You fancy everyone in a skirt. Not everyone. You do. You do. Mark me. You are unsteady in love. Prove your thesis. Richard Bosworth. You're a devil to remember him. You were smote by your Juliet. He was beautiful. He was a boy. Fifteen years. Fourteen. You mooned after him for months. Till his voice cracked. <laughs> your Juliet became a man. Before our very eyes. <laughs> Masters, welcome to our humble heart. God be with you. Aye, but which God, Barbie? We'd be wise to leave it there, Master. Amen. I beseech your pardon for this frightened child. And the daughter of your sister. The daughter of your sister. I like this child. Thank you, sir. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Has the devil taken hold of you? No, Auntie. Stand still. We're amongst friends. Yes. Now then, sweet sirs. Sweet sirs. Will you be needing the room for long? Till the cock crows, mistress, till we have seen the seven stars. Oh, I know that one. The morning stars. Oh. All and well, masters. But <clears throat> may I make so bold as to beg? <clears throat> Yes, yes, pay her, Burge. I pay? For the moment, yes. I'm skint. You're worthless. Does not the greatest writer in the world remember his friends and his time of good fortune? Does not the greatest writer in the world wish to cast a coin upon the altar of good fortune? This woman is a charm. Well, I know. Say you, sir? My coin speaks for me. Oh, it speaks of your eloquence and unsurpassed wit. By heaven, she's a fine lass. Well, I know. There he is. Well, over here. Come along, Well, I got news for you. Did the print my plays, man, every word of them. Shakespeare. Miss Douglas, uh, you're precisely on time. Oh, good. I thought I was late. You're Cheadle. Yes, uh, Henry. Oh, nice to meet you. So, this is it, huh? Hmm. Not very big, is it? Um, oh, I'm sorry I didn't see you standing there. You just sort of blended in with the background. I'm Harriet Douglas. Uh, Miss Douglas is a romance novelist. Uh, here. I prefer a writer. Romance novelist gives the mm, wrong impression. Oh, not that I'm afraid of romance. Quite the contrary. It pays the bills. But I'd like to think that I'll be remembered as an historically accurate novelist. Writer. I beg your pardon? Uh, Miss Douglas, uh, this is Ms. O'Connell. Yes, we met. Hmm. I haven't got much time, do I? Oh, traffic was a bitch. How do you people get anything done in this country with such massive gridlock on your streets all the time? Well, that's right. I'm no stranger to your shores. <laughs> My first novel was set in Stratford. Oh, Shakespeare's daughters. <laughs> oh, my publisher wanted to call it Sins of the Father, but I prevailed. He was pissed off at first, but son of a bitch made a fortune on that book. So... I guess I've sort of come full circle to the room where Shakespeare was killed. Adam. I beg your pardon? No, I beg yours. Excuse me? Uh, uh, Miss Douglas, uh, may I introduce uh, Miss Caitlin O'Connell? Uh, the writer, that Dr. is. Dr. O'Connell, PhD, Shakespeare Studies, Oxford. Currently, Prescott Chair, Trinity College. 
La dee da. How dare you? Well, you can just kiss my book no, end, no, sister. No, please. Oh, no, just a moment. No, ladies, before vulgar. We, let's just. Lawless uh, gothic romance. Wait, Unread hat. Oh, yes. oh, oh, bloody, bloody hell, no. No. No, do it now. Now. How we do? Input fellow, BBC, what? What? What's that you're rated, Will? Not seen, seen it. I read it here. Give me that. There now, you see? Oh God! What was it, Will? My death sentence. <laughs> A bit dramatic. My fate cries out. <laughs> Makes each petty artery in this body as hardy as the Nemean lion's nerve. Is the devil taking hold of you, girl? Sorry, pardon, masters. To the kitchen with me. Fetch some bread. Yes. Yes, fetch some bread. Oh, and some honey, if you will. Oh, sweets to the sweet. Oh, you flatter well. Thank you, sir. Not at all. <laughs> sweet girl. What's got you in a tether, man? Gentle Shakespeare. Yes. What's that? What grabs your eyes, Will? The unkindest cut of all. The lamentable tragedy of Hamlet printed some. Bohemia! Bastards! Thieves! Who printed it, Will? I know not. We'll find the bastards! We'll root them out! Ah, uh, use a fair copy. Well, uh, to be or think again, what is the question? <laughs> oh, no, Ben, tis not a fair copy. <laughs> know you who bestowed it on the printer, Will. Does it matter? Oh, no! To sleep in just a dream. <laughs> oh, no, tis a fuck. I know how the printer came by this copy, Will. Who gave it him? Ned Penny. Ugh, miserable wretch! It has his miserable stench about it. I should have got rid before he learned the part. You should have killed him, Will, thieving little actor. As are you, Ben. As are you, Barbie. As are we all. Aye, truth be told. Aye, truth be told. Aye, to the players, then. To only the good ones. Uh, Aye, to, to the good ones. ones. To the good ones. Not stop him! Who comes? A player of yours from above in the tavern. He heard your voices. Who is it? Ned Penny is his name. Bid him come forth. Will. Ned. You remember me? I remember the sound of your voice. Do you? Harsh. It jangles out of tune. I remember you, Will. Harsh. You jangle out of tune. You robbed my words. Yes, Master. You sold them for money. I did. Why came you? I heard his voice. The buffoons. Johnson? No. The windbag. Burbage. Where are they? Gone. Back door. Leave me in peace. As you wish. Master Will. That time, shall I return? I'm Henry G. Of course you are, David Goodfellow. <laughs> oh, but you know that already, don't you? Sorry I'm late. What have I missed? Camera crew is on its way. No cameras. No cameras. Sorry? No cameras. No cameras. <laughs> well, I've rung them up. They're on the way. Bring them back. Yes, bring them back. Mr. Chettle. Uh, well, Mr. Now, Chettle I... would be pleased to inform you that the presence of cameras would be an intrusion to our work. An intrusion, yes. But I've rung them up. They're on the way. Bring them back. Mr. Chettle, I implore you. A matter of this significance must be documented. Which uh, matter? What? Which significance? Well, this, uh, room, yes, yes, some secret from the past. Uh, surely you will allow me to do my job, Mr. Chettle. Well, yes, well, Mr. Cheetle I... would be... Oh, bloody hell, woman, perhaps Mr. Cheetle would like to speak for himself, yes? Mr. Chittle, the BBC would like to document this momentous occasion as a possible significant event in the, uh, you know, whatever, whoever. The people have a right to know, Mr. Cheetle. What say you? 
You are welcome to stay, Mr. Goodfellow. Thank you. Yeah, but no cameras. No! Cameras? Why? Why, you ask? Yes, why? Well, because the cameras distort the truth, Mr. Goodfellow. Because a documentary is a carefully constructed lie. And because the last time I stood before a camera, I was made to look a right idiot. They took out the best things I said and put together a video which made me sound like a cretin. No cameras. Fair enough. Right to all. No cameras. Well, then it's back to my basics then, eh? At the heart of every good presenter is a good reporter, they say, or should say, yes. <laughs> I say, would anyone happen to have a writing implement on them? Pencil, perhaps? Pen? Here's a pen, dear boy. Thanks, I'm sure. You're welcome. And your name is? Harriet Douglas. Perhaps you've heard of me. Huh. Should I? <laughs> Over here, dear boy. And let me tell you what's up. This room has been sealed up for over 400 years. Oh, surely not. Seven row? Hmm? Yes. Oh, no. Bond Street. Am I all right? You look fine from here. I haven't finished paying for it yet. Very at market. Yes, thank it's you. It's all of a thousand pounds. Well, very nearly. Of course, you can't get much for under a grand these days. It wouldn't be... Well, how should I put it? Mm, camera quality. Yes, that's it. Now, see here. I feel it's appropriate that we establish some ground rules, yes? Oh, sit down, Mr. Cheadle. We don't need no stinking ground rules. Um, no, but I feel that... I really must make it clear that we are all... Well, that you all are here at the sufferance of our local council. How and why they granted all three of you exclusive, that is to say, nearly exclusive, access to this room is not for me to say. However, it is my charge to assure that this room is not tampered with in any way and remains exactly as it was found. Before they tear it down tomorrow. Yes. We understand, Mr. Chicken. Good, I just would. So what's I... so special about this room then, eh? Well, for that, my dear Mr. Goodfellow, we must defer to our esteemed professor from Winchester. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. It's Trinity. I know that. Please, inform us. Well then, simply put... Barely 50 years after his death, we have one of the most legitimate yet wholly intriguing references to the largely unknown life of William Shakespeare. The Vicar of Stratford, one John Wood, a reliable source, is quoted by a diarist as saying that Shakespeare drank too hard at a merry meeting with Trayton and Johnson, that's Ben Johnson, a rival playwright and friend, and died of a fever that would be three days later. The significance of that enticing bit of reportage is why we sit here now. This room was most probably a secret Catholic meeting place, as it was hurriedly sealed up one day almost 400 years ago and never discovered since. Until the wrecking ball exacted its toll on the south wall. Was Shakespeare ever in this room? Was he a Catholic? And could this be the very room of the so-called Mary meeting? Well said. Thank you. And to think, he wrote all those plays with a feather. What? What?
use of use. Uh, tell them where, uh, where to begin. Remember uh, rabbit stew, Ben. No, I don't. <laughs> rabbit stew? Uh, before your time, Brad. We, we sat at the table to feast in Henry IV, one. Oh, two. It was the second part. <laughs> I do wish. And our Mr. Johnson had caused to be substituted for the stew, the most vile porridge ever consumed by man. Not I, oh. man. No, not I. Fain to deny, Ben. It was you. I was unwell for a fortnight. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Right, 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 Ben. The slate is clean. Oh, no, Ben. The night is yet young. <laughs> <laughs> that it is, Bertie. That it is. <laughs> Oh, sit, lad. Uh, what news from abroad? Uh, quiet. Very quiet. I would say the players. The players say but little of note and less of work. Ah, yes, it ever was. Damn them, the players. Players of folly, players of vanity and pride. We need the players back. Hang on, one and all. Hang we all, then, Master Johnson. So be it. To the death of the theater. A drink alone, then. I'm for the bog. I water the flowers, Will. I shall endeavor to flood the yew tree. <laughs> Float the ark, Will. <laughs> I shall. He's not well. Who is? What's wrong? With Will? <laughs> Life a wrecking. His daughter's marriage. Susanna? Judith. Ah, yes, Judith the Hellcat. Her mother's daughter. Oh, I. Well, how came you here today? We've not seen hide nor hair of Master Will of late. He came for business. Aye, the rich man came to count his money. <laughs> well, not for the printer. What, to thrash another backstreet ink man for imprinting another bad quarto? A uh, very bad quarto. <laughs> <laughs> no, for the folio. His life's work, is it not to be published? In a pig's eye it is. Well, I thought that it... Tis it is... Ben's plays to be printed, lad. Give me, Master Johnson, I didn't know. Shakespeare's plays printed as one. <laughs> that would be the day. <laughs> Can you imagine the sight of our will with the printer? Shall it be blow wind and crack your cheeks? No, 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 no. Uh, 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 crack wind and blow your cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 It shall be crack cheeks and blow your wind. <laughs> no, no. Shakespeare's plays were made to be seen, not read. Our will could not withstand the scrutiny. Hey, yeah, reckon you're right, Ben. Oh, I am, Burby, I am. When my words are imprinted in the folio, I shall present a fair copy to our master Shakespeare with this proviso. The Creon doth ever rise to the top. The world shall know for all time the words of the greatest dramatist in the English tongue. In any tongue, Master Johnson. Aye. <laughs> all hail, Master Ben. You flatter me. A drink. Oh, I've brought you some. Uh... Oh, sorry. He's not here. I'm not quite with you. I was wrong. It's all wrong. Uh, well, I've uh, brought you some. Uh... White, no sugar, you said? I. No, there's nothing here for me. I'll leave now. Oh, you're sure? I'm sure. Oh, I brought you a sandwich. No, oh, thank you. Where are the others? Oh, they're still in the pub. <laughs> Drinking their lunch? Well, it's cheese and pickle. Uh, that's all they have. She's telling them her whole life story. I left after her third novel was published for a million goddamn dollars. <laughs> she is good. Is she? <laughs> she can rather capture the feel of a place or a time. Quite extraordinary, really. I envy her. Her passion, I suppose. Rather more difficult to have a passion in your game. Why? I'm, s I'm sorry it didn't work out for you. So am I. Uh, would you mind, that is to say, why didn't it work out for you? Because there's nothing here. Because there's never anything here, or there, or anywhere. An old room sealed shut for near 400 years. Think of it. This had to be the place. Why else would this room have survived? How else could this room have survived if not for some 
blessed peace or relic of his life. We know about Johnson. We know what he liked and disliked. But Shakespeare, he just, he just sits there in the monument on his tomb on the frontispiece of his published plays. He just stares back at us. Was he, was he a happy man? Was he funny? Or was he sad? Was he full of himself or, or was he modest and, and unassuming? What does it matter? Mm -hmm. well, we have his words, they did save his words. They were published by his friends. Oh yes? Seven years after he died. It took them seven more years to publish his work. And maybe he just didn't care. Care? To see them in print while he was alive. Maybe he just didn't care. Well, hardly seems likely. Hmm? Well, does it matter? Mr. Cheadle, if you say that one more time, I do believe I shall burst into tears. Oh, oh my, no, I'm, I'm really... Too late. Oh, my, am I really... It'll pass. I'm back. Hiya, Cheadle. And how do? Oh, Mr. Cheadle, how are ya? Well, I'm well, thanks. Hi, sweetie. Hello again. So, what hath lunch rot, eh? Any scrap of a love letter? Or any sign of a quill pen stuck between the floorboards? Uh, Ms. O'Connell has decided to call it a day. Really? Yeah, she's got what she needs from this place. Is that so? Well then, I wish you good luck. And to you. Thanks. Uh, beg your pardon. Go and rescue Mr. Goodfellow. Uh, he's in need of someone to talk to. I think I wore him out. Uh, I really don't think that I oh, should... man, I just listened to him babble a while. I got as far as his broadcasting awards before I feigned the necessity of a return to this room. Remove nothing from this room. We won't. Uh, not a thing. There's nothing here, you silly man. There's nothing here. Twenty minutes. Sixty. Forty-five. Done. This started out as a normal day. <laughs> See you later, Cheeto. Forty-five minutes. I'll set the alarm. Nice man. Hi. Oh, he's nice enough. Hi. So, you're calling it quits. Got what I needed. Set so. And that was... I beg your pardon? What makes you Americans think you deserve an answer to your prying questions? Sorry. Well... You want to know what I'm after? I couldn't care less. Oops. Now it's my turn. I'm terribly sorry. It's all right. So, that's it, I suppose. Stick around. Sorry. Let's hang out for a while. Hell, that's all I'm doing anyway. Waiting for some inspiration to zing me in the ass. I couldn't work that way. Oh, you'd like to, though, wouldn't you? No, I wouldn't. Really? No, I wouldn't. Well, stick around anyway. Otherwise, Cheetle and the Beeb will gang up on me. Mm. You'll have them in turn for dinner. Let's stick around to watch. Oh. I think not. Actually, I have a confession to make. I've sort of appropriated your work. My master's thesis borrowed heavily from your presentation at Brighton. My God. 76? 78. Huh. Shakespeare's folly. Yes. His mother, his wife, his daughters, his consort. I changed consort to whore. Yes, in 79, I know, I reread it. But by that time, I didn't need you anymore. 
I'd graduated and begun my first book. But I must say, you sort of, well, stick around. Let's see if we can't conjure up a ghost or two. I'm afraid I don't have the knack for conjuration. Ever tried this? Not lately. We got 42 minutes before Cheadle and the Beeb get back. And a blasted man simply stood there, apish. And at precise moment, that instant of time. Good one, Ben. Harsh, lad. Jughead, barrelhead. Sorry. Listen and learn. <laughs> Sorry, Master Johnson. Continue, Ben. In that precise moment, that instant of time, before the man could recall his memory and speak his proper line of speech, there arose from the nearby pit the horrible howl of a dozen dogs. Most vile practice. It's blood, woman. Their baiting is against the honor of man. Shall I never finish my story? Hush, child. Oh, as you wish. What was that? Horrible howl. What? The rose from the pit, a horrible howl. Horrible howl, I didn't say that. Hey, you did, Ben. Horrible howls, a vile phrase. Well, I, I didn't say horrible howl, did I? Nay, Ben, you said a horror of howl. Yes, yes, much better, a horror of howls. Sorry, Ben. Horrible howl, leave the words to me, Burby. Hey, Ben. You can't saw the air with your hand without words, Burge. Tis true. <laughs> hey, well, tis true, Ben. Hey. Hey. Continue, Ben. Nay, nay, the moment's lost. Oh, please, uh, continue, Master Johnson. I fear I'm to fall. Yes, well. Please, continue, Master Johnson. Oh, your words make great profit in my head. Your words make merry my, um... Synapses? Sorry. Synapses. Synapses. In the brain. I just... Made it up? Yes. May I continue then? Yes, yes, yes. Continue, Ben. There's a good fellow. <laughs> Where was I? Bear baiting. Yes, that's it. In the it. pit. Yes, yes. Her shrieks are passed only by the pungent stench of new torn flesh. Enough of that! son at 11 years. Hamnet. Hmm? His son's name was Hamnet. Hi, Hamnet. How'd he die again? Wouldn't matter even if we knew. <sighs> Would you care for any more of this? No. Go ahead. I'm finished. <sighs> you have children? <laughs> yeah. Three. Healthy? Yeah, and they drive me nuts. <clears throat> They're grown now, but they still get up my nose. Mm. You? Mm. Kids? No. Pain in the ass. Wouldn't want to lose one. No, nor would I. He did. Yeah. Buried his only son at 11 years. Yeah. But he had another, you know. We don't know that. I do. Davenant. I, William Davenant. He would have been Hamlet's age when Will died. Really? Near enough. Hmm. The tavern keeper's son. It's no wonder Shakespeare would overnight here in Oxford on his way to and from Stratford or London. To see his other son. Aye. And the wife of his best friend, the mother of his only living son, What's her name? Hmm? The mother. Jeanette. Jeanette Davenant. He was officially the boy's godfather. But we know otherwise. Aye. 
Shakespeare and the Davenants. Quite a story there. Perhaps. <laughs> I must confess to reading you. Really? Uh, <laughs> which one? I can't remember, actually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it was all rather accurate. I thought it quite accurate. Thank you. Your research is formidable. Yes. They evoke time and place very well. Thank you. <laughs> I tried fiction once. You astound me. Shakespeare's Daughters. That was the title? No, the theme. It was entitled Progedy of the Pen. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> oh, you flatter me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was an awful title. Yes. <laughs> I certainly don't have the knack for it. Susanna and Judith. Hmm. His daughters. Susanna and Judith. Oh. Susanna, the apple of his eye, witty above her sex, they said. She must have been very like her father. And the other one? Hmm? Judith. Oh, Judith. <laughs> you feel him package? I beg your pardon? <laughs> <laughs> You've got the munchies. I despise the way you talk. Why is that? You're American. <laughs> that I am. Bring it on. Sorry. Chocolate. <gasps> oh. He cut her out of his will. Not quite. She married badly. Mm, Thomas Quinton. Whiny. Somewhat of a rogue. Always in a scrape or two. Judith was illiterate. We know that. Not unusual for the time. No. But Susanna could. We know that. And the wifey? <laughs> oh, his wife, Anne Hathaway. Oh, I, Hathaway, illiterate. The woman married to the greatest playwright the world has ever known. Could neither read nor write a single thought. Mm. What else? Mm. This chocolate's extraordinary. Mm. Yes. Mm. Of yours. Mm. Extraordinary. Mm. Mm. What else do we know about Anne? The subject of your latest book, perhaps? Perhaps. You're very good. How's that? You would play upon me. You would seem to know me stops. You can fret me, but you cannot play upon me. <laughs> Not really. I glean my information from many sources. You just happen to be handy at the moment. Fair enough. <laughs> Steal from the best. Forget the rest. You tell me. What? About Anne. You know as well as I. Do I? We know nothing about Anne. That's not true. Eight years his senior. That must have been a happy household when he married her at 18. 
she was 26. Couldn't read or write. The farm girl from Shottery. <laughs> Their first child was conceived out of wedlock. <laughs> Shotgun marriage, Shakespeare style. <laughs> but we don't know what she was really like. Nor him. Mm. But we have his writing. We have a clue. Do we? But Anne. Ooh, was she a sex kitten wildcat pouncing on Will for a roll in the hay? Or, or was a she... mean spirited little bitch. Just a warm hole in a cold night. <laughs> Careful there, girl. Earth to O'Connell. <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Guess not. <sighs> but it sure makes my job easier. No, I... <laughs> I can write whatever I want. Within reason. Yes, of course, within reason. But then... Why are you here? <laughs> You know you wouldn't discover Anne Hathaway in this place. No. That's true. Let's just say... I don't wish to be rude. Go on. We're not after the same thing. No. I'm after a good story. Aye. And you're after... Any chance of a cup of tea in the pub? Probably not. There's a cafe right next door. Would you care to join me? <laughs> no. The boys oh. will be back soon. I want to keep an eye on them. Well, they're not going to steal this place. You never know. Can I bring you something? A cup of tea would be nice. Biscuit? <laughs> Just tea. <gasps> Thank you. For what? For loving Shakespeare. Do I? I'll be back shortly. Take your time. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. Well. Okay, Willie boy. It's just you and me now. Where the hell are you, you Catholic son of a bitch? Get out of here, Catholicker.
Oh, yes. You son of a bitch, I've got you! I'll kill you all! Kill you all! Kill you all! Kill you! Papa, give us the money! Please, Papa, please! We need the money! You get not a penny from me! Ah! Oh. I hate you! And I you! Easy, Master Will! <laughs> Take it away, I'm out of it! Papa! <coughs> I love you! Let her go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shush. Shush. I love you, Papa. And I, you, child. Shush. I'm the bog. Turn the Evangela, Ben. I shall have ever to. Anyone? For a game of quoits. <laughs> Here, child. I'm sorry, Mama. Here, my child. I'm sorry. So, this is where you stay on your way back home. Yes. Hello, Richard. And, my love, how do you? Not well, thank you. Too young. Isn't she well? Yes. Too young for what, dear Anne? Baby? What say you? Not much to look at, is it? Dominus for Biscuit. That comes better to all. Amen. Will you be saying a mass tonight? Not tonight, my duck. William. Yes, Chuck. Will you be coming home this night? Nay. Then I must return at once. Come, child. We just got here. I rode half the day. As did I to catch you, you foolish girl. I need to talk to Papa. When he comes home. It's what you always say, when he comes home. Come along. I'm tired. Do it! Please, Mr. Sands, stay the night. Right tomorrow, there's plenty of rooms to be had. Not in this place. Sorry, Master. I say not in this place. Then along the way at the dog and hen. At the dog and hen, then. I'll make it so. Come, dear lady, rest a while. As you wish. Thank you. Foul knife for a ride. Foul will be fair, and fair will be foul, my father would say. Did he? He did. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. Know ye Master Will's play, then? My daughter reads to me. Ah, fair maid, thou dost well. Not me. Susanna. It's her what reads. Susanna, it's her what knows. It's her what's the apple of my papa's pie. Surely you mean your papa's... Richard. 
Recite us a line or two of prose. Done! What shall we hear? We'll have this. What have we here? Ah, yes, I know this. When my love swears that she is made of truth. I do believe him, though I know he lies. Yes. That she might think me some untutored youth. Unlearned in the world's false subtleties. Thus vainly thinking that she thinks me young. Although he knows my days are past the best. Simply I credit her false speaking tongue. On both sides thus is simple truth suppressed. And wherefore says she, not she is unjust. And wherefore say not I, that I am old? Oh, love's best habit is in seeming trust. And age and love, loves not to have years told. And therefore I lie with her. And I with he. And in our faults. By lies. By lies. We flattered be. Susanna reads well to you. Only too well. Now then. What's this I hear about a pack of hungry men in my tavern? Well, give over. What say ye? Thank ye. Well, it took some to do, but I found it. Oh, oh, I'm... Found what, chick? Many on. Come to the table. Thank you, Master Burbage. <laughs> My God, it's a feast. Why, they have a saint's day. Found what, Lambkin? Um, lodging? For? Oh, for Mrs. Well, oh, that is to say. I'm Anne. You've come from Stratford. Aye. You must be tired. I am as I am. Come. Sit at our table. No! Yes! Yes! Yes, then, yes! If it please you. Maggie! You forget yourself. Then, what's next? Oh, my God. Oh, God. Hey, what are you doing? Give me that. Do you? Yes. Have you? Yes. This looks dreary. Yes. This, oh, this isn't a scam, an American hoax. Go to hell. I pried it up, bitch. Look. But, but how did you know? How could you possibly? You're not the only one who can snoop around a bunch of old papers and books. What's this? I found it in the Bodleian in a 17th century copy of Hamlet. You thieved from the Bodleian Library. I well, sat in that book for over 300 years. Figure what the hell. So I got out my razor and I liberated it. I beg your pardon. Well, that's why no one ever found the damn thing. It was pasted backwards inside the front cover of the book. Otherwise, one of you anal Shakespeare slews would have found it. You defaced a book in the Bodleian? <laughs> Just read the damn thing.
But whosoe'er shall speak of the death of he who stood so tall, whose high estate and vaunted self is doggerel, Read it. Should be brought so low, so far to fall. Who wrote this? Read it. And all who were there, the named below, did witness the offense. They each did know. Thus, paper I divide. I rent in twin, Valfrey's. Keep going. Its cousin I conceal to hide the pig. This was not written by poet. You're almost there. Under the sign of the cross. It's Horkin. How did you know? Well, wasn't it obvious? I wrangled my way in here to make a connection somehow. What I found with what I knew. Isn't that what you did? Oh, yeah, I, of course, but I... I did. uh, you didn't have the paper. No. You would have found it eventually if you had had the paper. Perhaps. You see the other half. You mean again? Please. Can I trust you? Yes, don't stand. Oh, my God. What? They're here. Yes, here. here. With the BBC guy. The others oh, has brought God. the others in Two. Oh. oh, cameras, people, the lock. She just sold us out. Oh, the weasel. Oh, he needed the money. Civil servant braces for the children's tea. In Britain? Well, sorry? Well, of course in Britain. What do you think we are? Don't but only for 20 minutes. Yes, it'll help After 20 minutes, that. the BBC must leave. Cameras, people, and all. Cheetah gave the rest of our time to us. What? Yeah. Oh, bravo, Cheetah. All right. All right. Hello. Yes, hello. Hello. All right, James. James, you are right there, please. David, David, you stand there. I'll stand right here. 60 seconds, David, you bastard. I'm sorry, love, couldn't be helped. James, you ready? Give us a tick. We haven't got a tick, boy. Yo, we're live in 53 seconds. Don't move. No, just don't move. Talk to me, James. Yeah, yeah, go. They say they've got us. All right, David, we'll start on you as you switch over to the ladies in 40 seconds. Stand by. Ladies, we're live in 40 seconds. Yeah, 38. Uh, you wouldn't have something interesting for the Richard and Judy show, would you? Yeah. No. Ooh, right up floorboards. Uh, you sure you haven't found something newsworthy, have you? No. Yes! 30 seconds! Uh, it's in a matter of seconds, ladies. We're going live as an insert into the Richard and Judy show! That's Regis and Kelly to you, dear. I've taped the intro. It's already playing now in the studio. Right up floorboards. Something's happened since I was in this room, ladies! What happened? 20 seconds! Would you stop that, darling? Start off! It was your idea to go live? Right. No one knows the truth. No one can know, but I know, because I heard it all. All of it. All of it on the wireless microphone I left in the room, ladies. Bastard. As far as I'm concerned, it's your word against your word. The first one of you to speak. Ten seconds alive. The first one of you to speak becomes famous. Just tell us what you found. And five, four. The tape is now just finishing in the studio. Talk to me. Quite a night, Boyo. Hmm. I only desire to announce my happy news to you. Aye, Ben, that you did. Where are they now? <laughs> the devil knows. Around the hearth, preparing my supper, I hope. Anne's looking well. <laughs> yes. As proud as ever. Yes. And Jeanette. Yes. Uh, I can do it, Boyo. What say you? Two fine women. Want nothing more than to play as the likes of you. Happens they like the stories I tell. <laughs> Must do, Will. Must do. <laughs> Where's Burby? Oh, with the players. My God, man, you travel with your entourage. They play in Stratford tomorrow. They need a prologue. Aye. Aye. Webster opens next week. Mm, where? The Swan. Cheeky bastard. <laughs> What's it named? Entrails of virgins or some such matter. <laughs> <laughs> Give them what they call for, eh, Ben? Always will. Give them what they call for, eh? Well, have another. Oh, no, I, uh, right, tonight. Cardenio needs a prologue. Tonight? My God, man, you're a glutton. One must eat. I will, but your barns are full. You own half of Warwickshire. Yes. Who scribes for you? Uh, Susanna, when I'm home. Mm -hmm. And tonight? Tonight it will be Jeanette. Oh, I. Uh, Jeanette. How does your hand? Ah, that's as you see it. Ah, too many words. Too many scratches on paper. Why'd we come to this godforsaken room? <laughs> Twas your thought. Aye. The publication of your folio. Aye. 
and because of him. He for whom we prayed in this very room some many years ago. I kept Milo the best of the lot. The best of his time. Who took it quite woefully, quite unfortunately, in the eye one dark night. One dark and stormy night. Yeah, well. Who can forget the greatest voice of an age? Oh, fish sweller, rubbish. Cared more about living than anything else. Well, he did. Can't have that, can we, Will, eh? The lad didn't suffer enough, did he, Will? The lad didn't birth the pages so much as conjure them. He never lacked for employment. <laughs> Nor did we, Will, in the early days, eh? eh? The ink flowed freely for the both of us, did it not? Yes, perhaps too freely. What he had blotted a thousand. What see? Not will. Tis not. You know what I lack most of Kit? Say. Our beloved Kit. Pray. The pustule didn't seem to care, did he? No. For me, those years, I burned. I burned for him. Aye, aye. I burned for Aye, aye. That, that wretched little horse, and he'd sit and write in that little tavern in Deptford. Amidst the din and roar of the night, and pass a page or two of confounding beauty. I saw him do it. While I sat drinking across the room, while I sat hoping for rough weather on the morrow so the flag wouldn't fly, so I could sit in my upper room, so I could grapple for a wisp of invention, and there he was, half drunk in the farther corner, in the eye of the tempest, scratching on a paper the most beauteous words in the English tongue. Till then, well, not till now. Tis you now, Will. My ears deceive me? Perhaps. Say it again, monster. Defamer of rivals, destroyer of lessers, dark pennant demon. Never well, not to hear six levels deep in Warwickshire alone. Bastard. Upstart crow. Will! Blast you where I am! Hello! Hello! Hey, I. Drinking up by your profits, man. But my profits wouldn't buy you a groat's worth of solitude, my friend. Groat's worth of solitude, that's good. <laughs> we'll steal it, we'll turn about fair play. Come back for a quiet drink, Burge. I've come back for my master, Ben. This one. He who sits beside you, unmindful of his little place in our temple of words. I could be bounded in a nutch. <laughs> yes, 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 Will, but we're not saying those words tomorrow in Stratford. We're in the court of Cardinio, marooned in the epicenter of the city, unable to move forward or back unless you tell us what the bloody recite. Unless you pull yourself away from Signor Epicure and scratch out a bloody prologue for us to bloody recite, Will. Oh, coming. Coming. You sound like to your Romeo, Will. Coming, Julieta. More like to Kit's Faustus. Coming, Mephistopheles. Mephistopheles, you dunce. You never could say it well. Write me a piece, Ben. I'll say it as good as his wrote. Tis true, Burby. Come, let's be friends. Till thou cough us off the coffers, I'll greet you from afar. Denied for a debt. Ignominy, thou art my twice told tale. Ah. <laughs> that one's gratis, Ben. Come on, we'll to work. Oh, you see how they need me. Yes, Will. Oh, they're like my children. Till they grow, Will. I must teach them to speak. I get thee gone. Carry him away, tree trunk. Away to the mine. Parting is such sweet song. <laughs> Go write your epilogue, page smearer. You paper pricker. Come on, Will. Yes, a good man. You sweet, miserable joy. You world of wonders, you all of everything. You king. You god. Wait for me, I'm coming with you. Ah, hostess. <laughs> we shall return. Uh, Mr. Stavenin says it will be roast hen tonight. Oh, excellent defense. Don't be late, she says. Come up here.
creeping up on a lass. He's likely to receive an elbow for his efforts. A lad creeping up on a lass is likely to get what he most desires. And what might that be? A smile. Yes. A laugh. <laughs> Heaven forfend. A cuddle. An elbow, more likely. <laughs> <sighs> What's the matter, lad? You don't trust me? I trust you, as I trust the constancy of the moon. Oh, you're an actor. A trusting one. Yes? Well, let's see. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> trust no one. <laughs> I should throttle you. Try it. <laughs> I know how to tame a shrew. Oh, Petronio. Petruchio. Petruchio, then. I love that play. You amaze me. You've seen it. I have. Twice. When I was a wee lass in Stratford, but I remember it well. I was in it. In what? The play. I was an actor on the tour of the provinces some 12 years ago. I do not remember you. I played as a lead. What's that? I had a big part. Oh, you're too young for Petruchio. No, 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 not Petruchio. <laughs> I was Kate. Kate? The shrew. <laughs> I was quite good as a child actor. It happens that I excelled in the feminine form. That is to say, I was quite good as a woman. <laughs> Wait, you were Kate? Yes. And Juliet. I grew into Rosalind and Viola. But I'll never portray Portia. She's too old for me now. For as you see, my manhood has completely all reached my softer parts. You'll forgive me. You'll not be the first to place mistrust in your memory. I was quite a skirt wearer in my youth. I'm told I was a very pretty face. That was before my voice dropped with my baggage. Your trouble. I'm so troubled as I am pricked. What say ye? My dream of standing on the boards, speaking words of lofty rhyme composed. And you tell me that you, in all your glorious youth, did enact my sex? Well, I sat gaping at the sea, never to enact my dream. Women will come to the stage. Yes, but when I grow old, why should I not enact my own sex? Better me than thee. As I told you, I was charming. I was coy. I was beautiful. This may assist the illusion. Well, be quick. I leave tomorrow. For Stratford with the others? Nay, for London. I'm leaving the boards. Why? My time is finished. Happens my value as an actor has vanished with my rising manhood. More's a pity for the stage. Yes. But I care not. I tire of the likes of them. Who? The actors? No, Burby and the others are upright lads. Then who? Them. The scribblers. Ah, uh, Ben. Old sod. Looks through me as though I didn't exist. Yes. And the other one, the quiet one. Well. Yes. The pork butcher. The businessman. Why say you this? Pretenders. Shadows. Poor players to him. What really mattered. Who? My father. Who 
Who's your father? Have you ever watched them? Johnson and Shag's beard. Hunched back little scribblers, little humped clericals scratching out a couple little four. As if their words meant aught. As if their rhymes could change anything. They fancy themselves Euripides and Plautus. As if committing their effluence to paper were a reward of noble expectation. My father was a man of action. Too slow for him to scratch for the stage. He sought employment elsewhere. And found it. On a dagger point to his right eye. Died in an instant, I'm told. No epilogue to write for himself, no plotting of action, just... If he'd lived. Like them. Those two Hank Shaws. Better to die ignobly while alive than to bleed ink from his veins. Better to end it in the start than to wither away in the vine. Better for all. Was Christopher Marlowe? Kit. They called him. Kit. Uh, but you. Yes, I'm a bastard. No, I didn't. It's worse than that. How? Oh. I never knew it. But you're too young. It's worse. Yes? I wasn't born when he died. Yes? It's worse. With my mother upstairs at Eleanor Bull's house only once. Only the night he was killed. He planted me, and in an hour's time, he was carried out with a dagger in his face. I was merely an idea when he died. I never shared a day with him, I never even lived in his time. It's worse! The estate would kill him, the parchment caucus. If not for them, my father would live, and I, I would see him. How came you to know this? My mom, before she died, she told me all. And Master Will? I am Master Ben. How? My father was a spy. I'm a Catholic Spain. Made for the Queen's men. He defied the players, he was his own man. That's not so. It was. My mum said he was in need of the money, but my uncle said he hated Catholics. He hated our will and our master Ben. Happened that my father was a mere coin and sought patriot from the Lord Southampton. I... Shakespeare could pay to that soon enough. He poisoned my father's name and left him to it like a stage scratching and backseat whispering. My father hated him. Shakespeare hated his words, hated his faith. And it was them, Johnson and Shakespeare, who could have warned my father of his appointment with death that night. They knew. They knew the plot against him. They knew if my father went to the, went to the pub that night, he would never return. And he would never buy again for the glory they so lovely craved. Too much blood has been spilled on both sides. 
Let Catholic Spain have his way, I cannot. What will ye do in London? My uncle is a bleacher for Mr. Chattel, the printer. I shall assist him. And who knows, perhaps he'll print a quarter or two of mine. Do you scribble? No, but I have a good remembrance. To be or think again, I, me, therein lies the rub. I shall make, shall make a few pennies off, Master Will, after all. Well done, lad. Maggie? Oh. Oh. Yes, Auntie? Oh, must hurry. Will you be staying for the meal? May I have said my goodbyes and I'm off in the morning. Oh. Well, um, farewell then. Ned Marlowe. Fare thee well. Angel of the night. Maggie. Yes, Auntie, I fly. I must hurry. I follow hereafter. said we're sorry. No. I've never heard Richard and Judy so agitated. Can you blame them? I promised them an exclusive, and all they got was nothing. Sorry. Right, yo. I'm off. Off? To the studio. See if I still have a job. Before I go, just tell me what you found. Didn't you hear it all? Sorry? On the microphone. Right. Well, just set me straight on the facts. Wait! He knows nothing. I know everything. Prove it. You said nothing to Richard or Judy. You didn't need us to talk. Actually, the bloody thing never worked. <laughs> oh. Fifteen hundred quid for a microphone and the bloody thing goes to put. <laughs> well, thank you very much, ladies, for a completely wasted day. Chettle, close enough. I'm coming. Hello, the best ladies. You're leaving us too? And you've earned it. Besides, the record's come in a few hours. My deepest apologies for... Oh, come along, Chettle. You can give me a lift. Goodbye. Goodbye. All the best, ladies. Still have a little time left. Make the most of it. We will. Well, let's begin. Oh, let's do. You know, I couldn't have done this alone. Of course you could. Probably could have. But I wouldn't have wanted to. Oh, I've been medicating all day. You snatched it out of my hand. Sorry. <clears throat> For whosoever shall look upon this page that hath been writ, cry out, Woe betide, and there be an end of it. And all did know, all who were here, for our sweetest master, death was near. When I read that, it sent chills up my spine. I actually felt them. I've heard of it, of course, but I never actually felt it. May I continue? Oh, sorry, please. He died of a night. Thus you've been told. 
Three days hence, he was dark and cold. God's mercy rest upon his soul. We who were there must share our sorrow and our part. I served him and I served the others. He was kind and soft, and I loved him for his words. Yes. Read it. Well, hang on to your knicker, sister. It's a good one. Master Ben Johnson, Master Richard, Richard Burbage, Master William Shakespeare, and Shakespeare. What's she doing here? I don't know. I just don't know. It blows me mind. How are you doing? Is this take me to it? Guess so. Oh, I'm fine. Mm. Mistress Davenant. Gosh, in the same room. Huh. That alone should have killed him. Could we not have? Who else? One more. Ned Penny. Who on God's green earth is Ned Penny? Do you know him? Nope. nope. Oh. Ned Penny. A player? Perhaps. He's not on our list. A poor player, then. A non-entity. To Ben Johnson! who upon this most happy occasion has caused for celebration his most worthy collection of words. All right. To Master Ben. To Ben. Bye. 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 Well done, Ben. I'll be up the stairs if anyone has need of me. Sweet lass, I give my very best unto thee. Rich gifts wax poor. Givers prove unkind. <laughs> Burby, you've done it again. <laughs> done what? Sorry, I'll tell him, Will. Now, hey, Ben, you instruct him. Well, Burbage, you've broken another fair maid's heart. I did not. <laughs> oh, sit down, Richard, and eat a cape into Ben's house. <laughs> I never touched the lamp. <laughs> As I stand before our savior. <laughs> I stand unjustly accused! You are sitting, Burbage! <laughs> this is good, Burbage. Mm. Only the best for Ben. Well, thank you, Master Shakespeare. Good health. Good health. Are you getting anything? Hmm? Is anything coming to you? Anne Hathaway and Jeanette Davenant in the same room. And to me, mind is a clean slate. I cannot fathom it. I can't even cook up a good storyline. Even for a gothic, all I can see is a cat fight. Blood and hair, unless, what? Come, hostess, sit on it and regale us with your wind. Master Burbish, my wish shall slice you quick. Sit with us a while. Nay, sir, I like not the shape of your fancy. In short, sir, your amble hath a limp. Then I must ask the gentler lady. Sweet Anne, come sup with us. I cannot seem to warm myself. A chill has taken over my bones. Good lady, rest a while. Perfect. Yes, Ben. My cup has suffered a loss. Your cup knoweth no end, Ben. <laughs> Tis a bottomless pit, Ben. And as yours, Will. But we may have took care of you as a good fellow. Your kindness hath been in abundance most gracious. And most deserved, good lady. It cannot have been easy seeing him ride off to London. Again and again. Not for you. I... Again and again. How does your lad? Well, his Christian name? William. You knew not his name? Nay. Oh, dear lady, I felt most dearly the loss of your son. I am it. Oh, these many years. Twenty years. Another son now. Yes. 
and loves him well. Yes. It's you, he wrote in the sonnets. And you. Perhaps. Come. Sit. A toast! I grow weary without a hail of cheer. <laughs> to what, Master Ben? Well, to me, of course. Will, make us a toast. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Will. <laughs> Eloquent as usual, Shakespeare. You feel any foul play? You know us. Writer. Whatever you call yourselves, make it up. Write whatever you want, but don't quote it as fact. Well, they all had a motive. Elimination, gain, jealousy, lust, revenge, conviction. I beg your pardon? The six classic motives. Think about it. Johnson, his rival. Anne, his emotionally abused wife. Jeanette, the other woman. Judith, his disowned daughter. Who else? Urbit had said. Hmm, don't know about him. But any Catholic at the time was subject to foul play. We don't know he was Catholic. <sighs> Duh. Hit me over the head, I think so. Not proven. Well, what then? How'd he die? fun that way. You think Cheadle or the BBC would have done this with me? No. Let's go home. You'll write to me? I'll ring you up. You will? Hi. If you come up with something. I... I'll call you too. If I get an angle for a book out of this. Don't bother. I'll read about it in the Times. Best seller of the year. Thank you. I thought we were in with a chance. Me too. We'll never know anything more about him, ever. No, I guess not. What the hell? We'll just continue to make it up. Come on. 